Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about message versioning and how to share message contracts. This comes up a lot and with so many people talking about separation and clean architecture and all this other stuff that I kind of find to be a little bit nonsensical. I wanted to kind of go over how most of the people I know using mass transit are sharing message contracts between domains. Now I've tried to keep this as simple as possible, but you just can't go simple when you're talking about like an enterprise level development team or multiple development teams that are trying to keep track of message contracts. So let's just jump right in. I have, a, I have two, my usual message contracts that I have here. I have a submit order and then I have an order submitted. And if we go and look at this, the order submitted, I could even bring up the readme here and just kind of show you what you're talking about here. Submit order, obvious. It's a command, it's published because we're using RabbitMQ and we, it's whatever you want to produce when you want to submit an order. Order submitted is an event that is produced by the order submission system when an order has been submitted. And let's kind of look at this. The submit order consumer, it's part of the order management domain. In fact, it's in a separate assembly project called order management components. And it, let's look at the references of that. So first we have our contracts and that namespace. Again, mass transit is very particular about messages. The type must have the same name, same namespace. So some people like to cut and paste this into their projects so they can have nothing shared. I think that's a pain. It makes development teams hate you and don't do it. This is showing how to do it with a shared NuGet end to end, nothing complex. This is all out of the box developer tools. So submit order, order submitted. They're in this sharing contracts package. And if you look here in my NuGet package references, it is actually, I've created a local package repository. So if I go out to my local package repository, which is just this little number right here, you can see the only file in it is sharing.contracts 1.0.0.new package. And it is a very simple little thing. Uh, I did that using a NuGet push and my order management components. If we look at the NuGet packages of that, that's installed in there. There isn't a project reference to this, despite them being the same solution, which makes it easy to demo. So the NuGet package is used both by the API and the components, which houses the consumer. Now the consumer is hosted inside of a service that runs that just has some basic stuff. It's just, you know, setting up a, a domain of the order management domain for all of its endpoints. And then it has a submit order consumer. And if I go look at RabbitMQ, I can actually see that I have an order management submit order queue. And that queue is bound to that sharing.contracts.order management namespace with the submit order message type. So let's go from there onward. Within our API, we also have that NuGet reference, and this one is very simple. I switched it up to a controller based because that's what I'm comfortable with and it just makes sense. Um, I'm getting the order model and the publish endpoint, and all I'm doing is publishing the submit order message, which is then consumed by that submit order service. So all of this sort of works and our, ver our contracts are shared by a NuGet that's pushed to you know, an intra-company project or if you have a known NuGet server, I'm just using a local directory, but any NuGet source could be set up and you could push this to it. Um, that's all well and good. That's, that's easy enough to show. I can walk through that all day long. Let's talk about what happens when we wanna version this or we wanna add some additional message types to it because this is where people start to get a little sideways and a little too twisted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the order consumer and I'm gonna make it create something new. So I'm gonna make it create a order submission accepted response type that can be handled when an order is submitted. So in case we wanna use the request client to submit an order. Super silly example, but there we have it. So let's say we have an order submission accepted. And we are just going to return the order ID because honestly, it's just a response. We don't care a whole lot about it. And it's just giving us something to produce. So I have added this message contract, but again, this is in a shared NuGet. Now I may develop and experiment with this locally, but I'm, I know this is what I want. So this is what I'm going to put out there. I'm going to go into my sharing contracts. I'm going to bump that up to 1.01 because I've added a new type. I haven't broken anything. It's just a minor update. And we're going to dump that in right there. Uh, I'm now gonna come out to the command line and do a .NET, I think it's a .NET NuGet pack. Let's see here, .NET NuGet pack dot 
source, sharing contracts. Whoa, what did I do wrong? Oh, dash s local? No, what did I do wrong? Let's uh, cd source backslash sharing contracts pack. Let's just try that. Hey, look at that. It actually works when you're in the correct folder. Okay, so now we've got a 1.0.1 package. So now I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to do a push. And I'm instead of pushing 1.0, I'm going to push 1.1 to the NuGet source. Okay, so that's all there. If I go back and look at the NuGet repository, I now have two versions of the NuGet package. So all that worked. Everything's there. Now I'm going to go and update my components. As we can see, my NuGet thing immediately refreshed and said, hey, there's a 1.0.1 update. Now the API, that's in a separate team. They're not worrying about me at this point. They're doing nothing. All I'm doing is updating my component. So I'm going to update my component to use 1.01. I'm going to go work on my consumer. And I'm going to do something simple like if context.isResponse accepted, order submission accepted, then I'm going to do an await context.respondAsync. I'm going to new up that uh, order submission accepted type. And I'm going to pass in order ID equals context.message.order ID. Pretty snazzy. That's really annoying. Um, but yeah, so there's that. And that gets us so that we can have that message response in addition to publishing the order submission event. Pretty tasty stuff. In fact, we could even change the order of these if we really wanted to, to make the publish go first, so that we're not notifying the client that we've done something when we haven't actually done it yet. There we go. Sorted it up. We can now build and run that. And if we go over to my run tab, we can see I have my service. If we go and look at the message types in RabbitMQ, nothing has really changed. It's still just the submit order queue because again, we aren't really publishing that message type. We're only responding with it. Uh, and there's no additional bindings or exchanges for that type because we're not really using it. Um, and we can go in and let's, let's go ahead and run the API now. So let's just go ahead and run that as well. We'll get the API up and running. We'll get a nice little swagger. We'll go in here. We'll go to my post order. We're going to say try it out because we like to try things out. Oh, I need to go in here and create a GUID. We'll just go ahead and take that one. We'll just come in here and put that as my order ID. Order number will be order 123. Customer number will be customer 123. We will execute. We got our tasty little 200. And if we go look at our run, we didn't write anything, but we did stuff. Um, if we actually go out here and look now, one of the things that we will see in RabbitMQ is the order submitted exchange was created because we published that event. But again, nobody's listening to it, so there aren't any bindings. But it will go ahead and declare that exchange because it has now published that type. No consumers. It's not there. It's not bound to anything. Um, but the swagger UI is there. Now let's... And that's without changing the API at all. The API is just calling submit order. In fact, if I go into the API and I say, hey, API, let's, uh, let's go into that order management controller. Instead of doing this publish, let's get a from services, I request client of submit order. Because we now want to do the request client instead. So we're going to say request client dot get response order submission. Ex oh, look at that. It's not even there. Because it doesn't know anything about that type because we're still referencing version 1.1 or 1.0 of the NuGet package. You can see right here it's sharing contracts 1.0. Um, yeah, it doesn't know anything about it. But if I go into the NuGet Packet Manager and say, oh, well, hey, I would like to take advantage of that new API, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade that NuGet package. Now I'm using 1.1. Now I can go and get the order submission accepted. I can take the same order that I was passing and get a variable, just response. And now we're doing it that way. So now theoretically we would get that response. Let's just go ahead and return that response.message as the okay. Why not? It's just JSON. And let's go back to our run and run that service. So let's run this one. 
Let's run this one. Oop, beep, 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 beep. Don't need you again. Go back over here and make sure the service is actually running. Okay. Now if I go back to this API and I submit this order again, I execute it. And I get back a response body now of order ID because I'm using that new contract and because the consumer was written to say, hey, if they want a response, respond. Otherwise, it did nothing. It now gets that response and it's using that new version of the API. So that's a pretty basic example of how to use a NuGet package to share the contracts between uh, different projects without having project references, things like that. So you can have different teams, different domains doing, doing the same message type stuff. Um, that, hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea. I may follow this up with like how to version a message, but you know, just kind of the spoiler on that is don't change the, just like a database schema, don't change the behavior of an existing property. Don't add properties that are mandatory because if you have older clients, they're gonna not support that property and make your consumer aware of that. But maybe I'll follow that up with a separate one. For now, I think this gives a good example of how to use NuGet to share contracts between completely separate services. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. I'll put the code up online and we'll catch you next time.